14 hours with the world's best airline in the world's best business class, leaving behind the cold and snowy Midwest for the hot and dry Middle East. Join me on this ultra long haul voyage from Chicago to Doha with Qatar Airways' Boeing 777-300ER in their luxurious Q-suite business class. This video will cover every aspect of the journey from start to finish and also give you an idea of what international travel is like these days. I really hope you'll enjoy this video, so let's get this trip started. Today's journey kicks off at O'Hare Airport's new multimodal facility, which recently opened up as part of the airport's modernization plan. Speaking of modernization, O'Hare's airport transit system is finally back in service after being offline for the past three years. During its closure, the system received brand new train sets and was expanded to the multimodal facility. Right now we're passing by the old remote parking station, which used to be the final stop on this line before it was expanded. Growing up, virtually all of my travels started and ended at this very station. Now here's something you might find interesting. There you can see a Qatar Airways 777-200LR which will operate the midnight flight to Doha. I was originally going to be on this flight but Qatar Airways moved me to the earlier 6pm flight without any warning. O'Hare's modernization plan involves a huge terminal renovation and expansion project and we get some great views of the Terminal 5 expansion as we approach the station. Business class passengers along with higher tier privilege club members are entitled to a dedicated check-in lane. This makes for a very smooth check-in process and we were done in about 10 minutes, a nice change from the usual 30 to 45 minutes that I'm used to when flying economy class. Business class tickets include two carry-on bags and two checked bags, but thankfully we're traveling light today with just carry-ons. While checking in, you will be asked to present all required documents, which I will go over in a few moments once I clear the security checkpoint. Unfortunately, as a result of the renovations here in Terminal 5, all passengers were combined into the same security lines, meaning there were no priority lines for business class passengers, nor were there any pre-check lanes. While definitely a letdown, thankfully it only took 15 minutes to clear the checkpoint. International travel these days is a big hassle and should only be done if absolutely necessary. There's a sizable list of documents you will need to compile before traveling, but this depends on your final destination country. Regardless of final destination, all Qatar Airways passengers must present a negative COVID RT-PCR test taken less than 48 hours before the flight's departure time, along with proof of vaccination. You will also need to show your passport and any necessary visas or ID cards required by the country that you're flying to. International Terminal 5 is a rather basic facility. All of the shops and restaurants are pretty much located in one central area after security. Aside from that, the terminal basically branches out into two long hallways where all the gates are located. 
Now, as far as business class lounges go, Qatar Airways passengers do not currently have any access to any lounge here in Chicago. And here is a brief explanation why. Um, Qatar Airways never had a lounge here in Chicago. They never had a specific Qatar Airways lounge, but there is some sort of random lounge somewhere in the terminal that Qatar Airways and a bunch of other airlines are allowed to use. At the moment, I believe it's closed and they don't really have a lounge that Qatar Airways passengers are allowed to use at the moment. So until all the renovations and expansion here in Terminal 5 are complete, you know, Qatar Airways business class passengers don't get a lounge here in Chicago, which is, you know, kind of a disappointment, but you get a lot of food on board anyway, so you don't need to worry about that. And then, of course, the Al Morjan business class lounge in Doha is, you know, insanely huge and spacious and it's got everything. So you have that to look forward to. At the moment, Qatar Airways operate four different cabin configurations across their 777-300ER fleet. Our aircraft tonight has one of the newer configurations, with 354 seats consisting of 42 in Q-Suite Business Class and 312 in Economy. Q-Suite Business is laid out in a 1-2-1 configuration and is divided into two cabins, with rows 8-11 through 11 being in a smaller section. My seat for tonight's long journey to Doha is 10K, a rear-facing seat. These rear-facing seats are situated closer to the window, which makes them a little more private than the front-facing seats, which are closer to the aisle. Each Q-suite comes with a very large in-flight entertainment screen with a tray table and footwell underneath. Next to the actual seat is a small ottoman which houses a water bottle, pair of noise cancelling headphones, and air sickness bag. There's also a small section to store personal belongings. In front and to your right side, you'll find the seat control panel along with the remote for the in-flight entertainment. The remote is retractable and also has a small touchscreen, meaning it effectively doubles as a mini entertainment screen. Next to the remote, you'll find a universal power outlet, USB port, headphone jack, another USB port, HDMI port, and NFC sensor. Below that is a small pocket which houses the safety cards. There's a small nook to place smaller items, and then there's the main shelf which is currently occupied by the bedding, amenity kit, and hygiene kit. The last major feature of the Q Suite is the personal reading light, which can be adjusted along with the light intensity. There's also a small coat hook, which I later found to be quite useful. Shortly before pushback, the crew came around with a warm towel and welcome drink. I decided to have Qatar Airways' signature lemon mint as my drink, and it was actually really good. Uh, 
After passing 10,000 feet, the crew unlocked the suite doors, so of course I immediately closed mine to get the full feeling of privacy. The Q Suite experience places a big emphasis on detail, and you can clearly see that here with these beautifully decorated menu cards. Unlike economy class, there is no set meal time in business class, which means you can pretty much order food whenever you want, in whatever order you want. The menu cards are in both English and Arabic, and give very thorough descriptions of each dish and beverage. Dinner service starts off with some delicious warm nuts and choice of beverage. I decided to go for the non-alcoholic So Jenny, which is basically a sparkling grape drink. To be honest, I wasn't a big fan of the taste, but was still glad to have tried out something new. Up next was some delicious corn soup served with salt and pepper shakers, butter, and a bread roll. After that came the actual appetizer, and my choice tonight was the Arabic meze. This consists of pita bread served with mutabbil, hummus, and tabbouleh, and it was absolutely delicious as expected. There were four choices for the main course, and tonight I went for the seared chicken breast. This was served with sweet potato mousseline, grilled asparagus, and purple cauliflower. Again, a very tasty meal. Now I hadn't eaten anything all day in preparation for this moment, so of course I went for dessert. Of the two choices, I settled on the dark chocolate fondant, which tasted just as good as it looked. The overall dining experience in Q-Suite is truly premium. Each meal is served with metal cutlery and even artificial candles, which is so extra, but something that really makes the experience feel all the more special. After dinner, I decided to open up the amenity kit to see what's inside. The business class amenity kit pouches are made from real Italian leather in collaboration with Monte Vibiano, and inside they contain skin moisturizer, an eye mask, facial mist spray, earplugs that come in a small plastic container, lip balm, and a pair of socks. Each passenger also receives a basic hygiene kit on boarding. Inside is a single disposable face mask, pair of disposable gloves, and bottle of hand sanitizer. The Oryx One in-flight entertainment system is fantastic, and there's plenty of content that is sure to keep you entertained. Unfortunately, there are no interactive in-flight maps on the 777, as those are only found on the 787, A350, and A380. This older software is basic, but still pretty decent. It operates in loops, meaning it circulates between different viewpoints. The entertainment options are extensive, with many different languages and genres to choose from. There's also a folder dedicated to promoting Qatar and a separate folder for kids entertainment. Passengers can connect their mobile devices to the system and also read the Holy Quran. Last but not least is a dedicated folder with information about Qatar Airways. The in-flight entertainment system also has a picture-in-picture -picture functionality. So theoretically, you could be watching a movie, but also have the map minimized in a certain part of the screen.
Now here I briefly wanted to demonstrate how the remote acts as a secondary display. As you can see I have Space Jam on the main screen, with the flight map playing simultaneously on the remote. With this setup you could theoretically play a whole nother movie on the remote as well, but that doesn't really make any sense. I also wanted to mention that the headphones provided were truly noise cancelling with incredible sound quality. Business class passengers each receive a pair of pajamas upon boarding, which also come with slippers. The pajamas are made exclusively for Qatar Airways by The White Company and are very comfortable. They do come in a variety of sizes and of course the flight attendants ask which size you want beforehand. I was feeling a little tired so I asked one of the flight attendants for some help turning the seat into a bed. In no time the bed was made and I was super excited to finally experience the unique feeling of having a bed 36,000 feet in the air. I woke up about 4 hours later. It was broad daylight outside and we were cruising somewhere over Bosnia. Overall the bed was comfortable and I slept very well. However one downside to this seat is that because the headrest is so large, it juts into your back as you lie down and you can still feel it even with the comforter in between. After waking up I decided to try out the onboard Wi-Fi. Privilege Club members get one hour of free internet access, otherwise the full flight pass costs a very reasonable $10. I'm a Privilege Club member, so I took advantage of the free hour. Unfortunately social media apps like Instagram were a bit slow, however others like FlightRadar24 worked perfectly fine and just in time to capture a very cool moment. Here you can see our flight, QR726 from Chicago to Doha. We are just about to pass QR725, which is headed to Chicago from Doha and has my friend Ali or AZ Aviation on board. Now that there's light in the cabin, here's a quick look at the overhead panel. Above each suite are two personal air vents and an overhead reading light. You can use the remote to turn the light on or off, although turning it off requires a bit of force. With two hours left in the flight, I decided to order breakfast. For my beverage, I chose orange juice along with some extra water. I went with a fresh fruit plate for my starter, and for the main course, I had the cheddar cheese omelette which was served with potato gratin, tomatoes, and asparagus. The meal was also served with butter and a croissant. Overall this breakfast was very good. The fruit was fresh, easily the best I've ever had on a plane, and the omelette wasn't too bad either.
By the time breakfast wrapped up, we had just entered Egyptian airspace over the Sinai Peninsula, and the views were truly spectacular. After what seemed like a very quick 12 hours in the air, it was already time for descent into Doha. We passed over the Mom Saudi Arabia and Bahrain before entering Qatari airspace. We then flew parallel to the coastline, downtown Doha, and Hamad International Airport before making a 180 degree turn and landing on runway 34 right. Qatar Airways has continuously been ranked as one of the world's best airlines. Even during the pandemic, the airline has continued to prove that it is truly deserving of such an honor. My experience in Q-Suite today was nothing short of incredible and there's not much else I can say about that. I was very impressed by how Qatar Airways were able to maintain their world-class service during these challenging times while simultaneously employing the best health and safety practices. Overall, a job well done by the world's best airline, and I can't wait to fly them again. Thank you so much for joining me on this epic journey. 
After a four-hour layover here in Doha, I'll be continuing onwards to Karachi, Pakistan with another Qatar Airways 777 in Q Suite once again. And that video will be coming soon, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and comment with any feedback as I'm always looking for ways to improve these videos. But that's all for today, folks. Take care and ma salama.